Check out your local garden center and see what spring flowers are available. Shop your house for a woven basket. First, spray paint your basket in a moss green color. Once the basket is completely dry, take a can of clear spray adhesive and spray a small section on the side of the basket. Take clumps of green moss and press it onto the sticky side of the basket. Continue to press moss onto the sprayed area on the basket. You can manipulate your moss so it is a little thinner and covers more space on the basket. Continue until the base of the basket is covered. Don't worry if every spot is covered. The green basket color will disappear behind the different green shades of the moss. You will also want to spray the rim of the basket with clear adhesive and press the moss onto the basket rim edge. Have fun playing with the placement of the different shades of the moss. You don't need to glue moss to the inside of the basket. Instead, take a clear plastic water tray and press it into the bottom of the basket so it is protected. Now, grab some scissors and start to cut apart the different cells of the flower six pack. Start to place the individual plants into the moss covered basket and arrange them so any blooms or buds are facing outward. Fill in around the bottom of the plants with the moss so the plant cells disappear. Depending on your weather, place this moss-covered basket indoors or out and enjoy watching each bloom emerge as spring appears. Look for flowers in a multi-pack that can be split apart. Take your laundry basket and drill several holes in the bottom with a drill. Line the laundry basket with a burlap bag or burlap fabric. Start to fill the burlap lined laundry basket with potting soil. Fill to about an inch from the top of the basket. Then cut the excess burlap from the top of the basket with some scissors. Starting with the second row of side basket holes, cut the plastic between two holes to create one larger hole. Then, cut out the burlap from that larger hole to access the dirt. Take one of your plants and plant it in the hole by pushing it into the dirt behind it. It helps to use your other hand to grab the plant as it comes through the hole and press dirt down around it on the inside of the basket. It will work best if you alternate holes for planting so your flowers have room to grow and expand in their new basket home. Once you have the sides of your basket planted, you can plant the top. You can use one group of plants or continue to plant individual flowers from a multi-pack. Set your new planted flower basket outdoors and enjoy watching your flowers grow up the sides of the basket. The next time you are at a thrift store, pick up some inexpensive wicker baskets. For a basket with an already dark finish, Dip the paintbrush in the paint and then pounce or repeatedly press the loaded brush onto a paper plate to remove some of the paint. Take the brush and lightly brush the paint onto the basket in the main direction of the basket weave. Don't press heavily on the brush, but rather whisk it lightly against the side of the basket. This basket finish looks fantastic styled with flowers or green plants. Now, take a wicker basket with a very light finish. Spray paint the basket in light layers with an oil rubbed bronze color. Let the basket dry completely between light layers for best coverage. Using a couple of different paper plates is a good way to make sure you have the amount of paint removed that you want. Paint in light layers. You will notice that the paint dries very fast between layers because there is actually very little paint used. I hope this inspired you to give inexpensive wicker baskets an updated look with paint. All right, so we are going to start our project with these uh, flexible plastic garden fences. I got mine at Dollar Tree. You should only need about four of these for this project. Um, and I'm gonna start with the first two. I'm gonna start by cutting the bottoms off of this. Just using regular scissors for this part. You wanna make sure you're using sharp scissors. These ones are a little dull. <laughs> so now that I've cut the spikes off, I'm gonna get those out of the way. Um, what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be laying 
are pieces of garden fence kind of overlapping. So I'm gonna have it overlap about this much. So these two pieces are kind of overlapping with the other side. Um, but I'm just gonna cut it and I'm going to secure these two pieces together. Now you can use a variety of things for this. I'm gonna be using floral wire for this. Um, I'm gonna be securing this on three points. So I'm probably gonna secure it up here and here because I don't want it wiggling too much. So see if it, if you only secure it in one spot, it's really um, gonna be a little harder to work with, especially with what we're gonna do for this project. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to basically connect these on the same place over here. We still wanna maintain that round shape, but we'll get into that in a bit. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do the same thing essentially on the other side and uh, we will be back. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take our round piece and we're gonna lay it over. Because essentially we're gonna be using this as our bottom. So yeah, so we're gonna use this over our bottom kind of best fit and see where we need to cut along the, the fence here. So I think I'm actually gonna cut right here. So we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna place this over and we are going to work on attaching this top piece to this bottom piece. I'm gonna do it, uh, I'm gonna start in four corners and then I'm going to see what other positions need to be added. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to um, cut off the excess over here. So if you can see, we have a little bit of excess here. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm just gonna make sure I cut off as much of it as I can. There we go. All right, so now we have this round piece finished. We got our base done. So we're gonna move on to our next step, which is creating um, a top. All right, for this next step, we're gonna take our fourth piece of fence and we are going to essentially be separating it. So I'm gonna cut down the middle first just to make it a little easier to work with. Okay. So we are gonna start by using this bottom half piece and we're gonna cut the spikes off again like we did on the last um, couple of uh, fences for the basket. And so we're gonna keep this side nice and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna cut right above this little guy right here, this little uh, piece. And we're gonna go straight across. Okay, so we have this piece already. I'm gonna put it on this to the side so we can work on the other one. For this piece, we are going to cut across, but we are gonna cut across this top part. We're gonna get rid of the little spiky guys and the, the, the little hoops. So what we're gonna do for this part is we are just gonna lay them on top of one another and we're just gonna secure them in place with our wire. So pulling out my handy dandy wire again. We're gonna do the same thing we did to secure the other part of our basket. So stay tuned, we will be back when this is all secured together and reinforced with our wire. We're gonna do it exactly the same way. We just want these two pieces to um, stay attached. All right, so this is now secured. So we are going to attach this piece to our lower part with the wire and then we are going to attach it on the other side. So it's gonna, um, it's gonna become a basket. All right, so now that this is all attached, we are going to add a coat of some of my Rust-Oleum chalked linen white. Um, you can paint this obviously any color you want, but um, I wanna give it kind of an age rustic vibe. So I'm gonna be using a normal brush and probably a foam brush for this step. We're just gonna start applying our paint. And like I said, we want this to kind of look a little rustic so it doesn't need to be perfectly coated, but we're gonna cover the entire thing and we'll let it dry. All right, so now we've let the paint dry for our basket and I'm gonna add my own little spin to this. So you can stop at this point if you'd like, but I'm going to be adding some twine uh, to my basket in certain areas just to give it like a really nice decorative accent um, and also to keep the, the basket in the position that I want it to be. 
So first I'm going to start with my side, the sides of my handles. But I want to kind of, like I said, reinforce this so it doesn't go anywhere, but also kind of give it like a rustic look. And so I'm probably gonna have to ball up my twine a little bit just so it's easier to work with. Essentially, I'm just gonna try and kind of cover up this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep wrapping my twine so we will be back when we're ready to move on to the next step. So now that I've wrapped the, uh, the top and the sides with the twine. So we're gonna take this and we are gonna go put it out on my screened in porch for where it's gonna live.